Uh, and you also see that in, in the budget messages that are coming across, uh, saying, OK, we're going to cut back on health care for the aged and for the poor, but we're not going to do anything about overall health care costs. What does that mean? It means that if you're going to cut back on health expenditures for the aged and the poor, and you're going to let health costs continue to rise, that says rationing. They're not going to be able to get health care. Already, we spend more money with poor health outcomes than those in other countries in the advanced industrial world. And it's going to get worse as the poor and the elderly can't get access to health care. In that vein, I wanted to ask you about a recent dissent of yours uh, that a, uh, a bunch of uh, eminent uh, economists, of cha former chairman of the President's Council on Economic Advisors and other members were asked to sign on to a letter about the need for deficit redu reduction in the future in the United States. Why did you dissent and, uh, to that letter? Well, it, it, the letter said uh, all economists agree that you need to get deficit reduction. We ought to show that there's something called economic science. And then they came out in support of working off the Bowles Simpson proposal, which is the bipartisan deficit reduction. I looked at that very carefully, and I come to the view that that is not going to make America stronger. It's not going to make our economy stronger. Uh, I said before that there are two you ways. It a, a, a potential suicide pact. That's right. Why is it? There, there. I mentioned before that there are two ways of cutting the deficit. One is raising revenue. The other is cutting expenditures. Well, what's the best way of getting tax revenue up? It's to put America back to work. If America were growing, if we were back to our full potential, our output would be higher and tax revenue would be substantially higher. So the best way to reduce the deficit, as I said, is to put America back to work. Now, I thought the Bowles Simpson is a recipe for making our economy weaker. If you start cutting budgets now, spending now, before the economy is back to health, you know, we, we, we already suffer from the deregulation. Now this is going, we're going to suffer again from the thoughtless deficit reduction. And that means people are going to be out of jobs. That means revenues are going to be lower and our economy is going to be weaker. But the second point. I read, you know, is that it goes back to look at where the revenues are going to be. We have a, so much money going into the upper 1 percent, the only way of fixing the revenue problem is to raise taxes and have a more fa fair tax system. What they proposed was eliminating some of the deductions, say, for housing, mortgages. Well, if you do that now, House prices, which have continued to decline, will decline even more. But the more fundamental point is, even if from the long-term point of view you want to get rid of these mortgage deductions, you shouldn't do that on the backs of the middle class. That should be viewed as a revenue neutral. You lower the mortgage deduction, but you also lower the tax rates to offset it. That's not a revenue, shouldn't be a revenue hangar. These are the people who've been doing very badly for the last 10, 15, 20 years. Joe Stiglitz, we're going to go to uh, Medicare and Medicaid in the crosshairs in just one minute uh, with uh, two health care activists. But speaking of the crosshairs, let's end on the issue of war. Uh, you wrote with Linda Bilmes the book The Three Trillion Dollar War, The True Cost of the Iraq Conflict. That's not talking about Afghanistan, what, $2 billion a week, the longest ongoing conflict in U.S. history. What about the cost of this? It's enormous. And, and since we wrote that book, uh, we did uh, uh, new numbers came in, and things are worse than we said. The disability rates are higher. The cost of caring for the disabled are higher. Almost one out of two people coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan are disabled. Uh, this is an unfunded liability of we calculate now to be almost a trillion dollars, nine, over nine hundred billion dollars. Uh, so. One of the big ways of reducing our deficit is, a, is cut back some expenditures. I believe we could have more security with much less spending. We are spending you know, literally hundreds of billions of dollars with, for weapons that don't work against enemies that don't exist. The Cold War ended more than 20 years ago. And yet, if you look at our military, it's 
Nobody seems to have told it that. Uh, another way of, of thinking about it, we spend more money now than all the rest of the countries of the world, or almost as much as all the rest of the countries were put together. And yet, when you have a, a, a case where you might arguably want some use of, you know, to protect people who are being killed, we say, well, we can't do it, even in a small country of a few million people. We say, oh, no. Our military can't do anything. So we, we, we've been spending all this money and getting actually very little security for it. So my own feel, feeling is that we could reduce our money, uh, our spend, expenditures markedly, particularly get out of Afghanistan, and improve our security. You know, if there's a government shutdown, it's possible that Congress members who shut it down would continue to be paid and soldiers would stop being paid. Yes. Um, I want to thank you very much for being thank with you. us, Joe Stiglitz, Nobel Prize winning economist, professor at Columbia University, his latest book, Freefall, America, Free Markets and the Sinking of the